Hey everyone, welcome to episode five, finally, uh, five weeks in, and I've got all of the components in place, and that's what it looks like. Uh, in this episode, we're going to uh, pull all the components out again, so that I can finish up the framing around the sink. It's a little bit more complicated than the framing around the side burner, because I've got to allow room for the faucet, uh, the plumbing supply, uh, and the disposal to all fit down in between the braces. Uh, I do actually have a couple good close-ups of that. And, um, and then, of course, I uh, thought of a new way to keep this whole thing level by stretching a beam uh, completely across the top, clamping it down, and then uh, working up to that beam, as you can see here, versus uh, what I was doing, which is using the level on, you know, just every single step across the way. Uh, so this actually worked out really, really well. And, you know, you can't do this until you're far enough along. But I guess you could, if you were doing a freeform kitchen that wasn't up against the walls, uh, you could stretch across a known plumb line, in this case, uh, the beam. And the great thing about these beams is they don't uh, bend or flex or anything. Uh, you could use a string, but uh, the beam worked out really great. So what I'm doing here is building up the two supports on either side of the sink, just like I did in the previous episode for the side burner. And I actually screwed this side up. You'll see it a little bit later in the time lapse. I made it exactly two inches too high. And you know, if you're like me, when you stop a project and then you don't go back to it for several days, you, I kind of lose my rhythm. It's a very busy work week, so this is actually Saturday. Uh, I didn't really get very much done at all Friday night. Uh, with the time change here in Florida, it's really it's pretty annoying. It gets gets dark pretty early now, about 6 o'clock. It's, it's pretty much unworkable as far as lighting goes. Uh, and it takes me, you know, 15, 20 minutes to kind of get back into the groove of working on a project. And uh, in that process, I was uh, bringing that uh, right up to the top beam there, which was wrong. Uh, it, it, the whole thing, that, that uh, beam that I was using to level uh, should have slid over the top of the future perpendicular beam that would go along the wall. I'm sorry, parallel beam that would go along the wall perpendicular to the back wall. And I just had to rip the whole thing out again and, and redo it. But it's just those two posts on the far right that... I'm screwing up here as I'm uh, as I'm talking, watching myself. Wish I uh, wish I was being a little more observant. Uh, but anyway, here's a close up of what it looks like sending those screws in. It's super simple, and uh, as long as you have quite a bit of force on the aluminum, it doesn't move around. But if you're trying to do it freehand, it really does move around quite a bit. I actually did get this in here really perfectly level. Uh, you know, you have to make sure you're level in all directions, right? So I was just constantly slipping that uh, main beam back and forth to make sure that it was level and then making a few cut adjustments here and there. And then you got to make sure that the front of the cabinet is level also. Uh, so came out really good though. Uh, the whole thing's built exactly the same. I didn't really deviate from having a, a bottom beam and then the braces and then the top beam throughout the whole thing, except for the end there because I was able to just bolt it into the wall. Something I did in this episode is I slowed the video down a little bit to a normal time lapse, I guess you could call it. What I was doing in the last uh, four videos was putting the time lapse in t double speed, and I got a few comments uh, asking to slow it down, uh, just so you could really see the actual construction. Uh, I was able to keep this video right to about 30 minutes by leaving it in the normal speed, uh, partly because I I really didn't actually get as much done as I have in the past. Uh, but uh, I think what I'll do is continue to do this speed. It's just much more manageable. You can kind of watch it, and it doesn't really skip anything. What I was finding with uh, the program I'm using, Final Cut, it does tend, it just goes by so fast that you just, you miss stuff. If this is something that you're, you know, considering doing yourself, um, seeing how 
these beams screw together and just how many times you've got to continuously check to make sure that it's level. Uh, I, I know I would appreciate watching it. It'd probably make, make the project go easier if I had uh, seen something like this. In a second here, you'll see when I screw in the back beam there, it wants to bend the beam, uh, and that's fine. You just kind of bend it back, and the tension from the angle brackets going in opposing directions causes this stuff to be crazy rigid. So here I'm uh, working on finishing up that left-hand brace on the sink, and then the next thing that I do is the two braces on either side of the grill. It's just exactly the same process. You build the base, uh, you get it all the right height, and then you put the stuff in and build up to that minus the thickness of the granite. And then put bracing in, uh, mostly just to support the granite. The stuff is so strong that it's not going to flex or bend. Uh, but the granite can only go so far without a support. So... Uh, a lot of what I did in the back behind the burner, the side burner, well, really that whole beam across the back is just purely there to support the granite. It doesn't do anything else. So I go back and forth between putting the braces on the tube before I put it in place and putting the braces on the tube after it's in place and clamped together. And uh, then I usually get stumped and stand there and look at it for a while, uh, trying to figure out you know, what would be the best way to do this and where would be the best way to connect it. The other thing I ran into was the, the little brackets. I, because I have everything so tight, the little brackets cannot be on the insides of these pockets, if you want to say, the slide-in pockets. So the grill slides in, the sink slides in, and the side burner slides in. And it is within a half inch on either side of the uprights that the granite sits on. And it has to sit on a flat surface. So the screws are in the way. So I had to make it so that it was rigid without any supports intruding into where you would slide the components. The whole reason why, and you're going to see in future videos, the whole reason why is because I wanted to fit all of this stuff in between the wall and the deco drain in the floor on the left, that tan drain that you can see. And I only had maybe an inch to spare. Now, I could have made the two-inch thickness of the beam smaller. I could have used more of the uh, one-inch beams and then just reinforced it. I could have done a number of things, but um, it worked out. It's just really tight. So for instance, the refrigerator is going to actually touch the drawers. There'll be nothing in between. Those two flanges that go around the fridge and around the little chest of drawers, that's going to actually touch. And then the stone that we use on either side of those little wing panels, there's, there's going to be a vent in either side there, but it's going to actually touch the flange around the left side of the fridge and the right side of the chest of drawers. Uh, so everything touches. I mean, this thing looks very modular. You know, it almost looks like if it was on wheels, you could just kind of roll it around. Um, and that's okay, you know, I, I wanted to just maximize and get the most into this space. And that's what I accomplished, uh, but it is tight. And what is taking so long is you just can't fudge anything. If, if anything is off, this stuff doesn't fit. And um, I, I, I'm, ru I'm running into a problem on the sides of either of these wing panels here where I'm going to have to put in angle brackets and mount the concrete board flush with the aluminum tubing because I'm going to have to sand and glue the stone directly to the aluminum in some areas because I just don't have enough clearance. 
Uh, so that'll be a future future episode of figuring that out. I'm waiting for the vents to come in. I have two vents that are six inches by, I think, 13 inches, and they're gonna go on either side of those wings. And then I have a larger vent that's gonna go on the left side, and I should have plenty of ventilation. And because it's propane, the vents will be down low. If it was natural gas, you probably wouldn't even need vents, but uh, but down low with, uh, with propane. And I think the rule is uh, one vent every four feet, I wanna say, uh, so. I'm, a, I'm just a tiny bit over that, but it'll be fine. All right, here I'm getting into the plumbing. And for whatever reason, they ran the supply lines right down the wall and then stuccoed kind of over it. I show it to you later when I do an actual real-time video tour of the completed work this episode. But I couldn't get the cutters in there, so I had to use that saw. And... Um, once I got the house drained, it's a two-story house, so there's you know, quite a bit of water came out of there. I just started dry fitting everything to bring it over um, and then plumbed it straight down. And I had to get it back far enough so that I could fit the faucet in uh, and then down low enough so I could access the valves uh, underneath the disposal and allow enough room for the pipes to bend in on either side of the disposal. So I kind of guessed, but I'm pretty sure that I accomplished that. And um, once I got everything kind of dried in, so to speak, uh, with the with the plumbing, um, I moved the camera and kind of give you a different view of what's going on underneath there. Now I didn't fool with the drain at all because what I'm going to do is mount the sink and the disposal so that I can bring a down pipe off of the disposal and then uh, trap it back to that two inch drain. It's gonna look, it's gonna be really nice in there, a nice neat package, uh, but I don't want to cut that main drain too short right there, that PVC pipe in the back. If I cut it too short, then I'm just gonna have to build it back up. So I'd rather just wait and be patient and do that later. So before you say it, yes, I know I'm using the cheap glue and uh, it works fine. It's what I had. Uh, I just didn't go out and buy the, uh, there's a nice view of the day. Beautiful day outside. I'm not sure why the camera got pointed up like that, but um, pretty sky going by. Uh, anyway, I needed a brace back there so that I don't put too much pressure on those uh, half inch lines and crack them when I'm trying to turn it on and off. So I quickly just cut a piece of tubing and then braced it to the wall and you know squeeze it in there on my hands and knees uh, with all those metal shavings and it was not uh, comfortable at all but um, but it worked out fine and provides uh, plenty of support you see the drill bit got stuck in there uh, anyway provides plenty of support uh, for those for those two valves Well, the frame's completely done. I can't get that refrigerator out by myself, but uh, I need to slide it out because what's next is electrical. Frame's done, uh, plumbing supply is done. I'm not gonna do the drain until I put the sink and the disposal in so I get it at the right height, but uh, this is how it turned out. Got plenty of support for the granite. Um, I'll let the granite guys figure out how this will be shaped and here's the uh, supply lines that come down the wall here it's really strange I don't know why they did that afterthought but that's where they are and I just brought them uh, down uh, under the disposal so I'll be able to reach them and then there's the drain back there which I will plumb in later I've got plenty of room here for the disposal to drop in and I put a half uh, beam in here because I needed more room to clear the plumbing to get the uh, faucet. The faucet will sit right here. Um, what's next is to uh, let everything dry because I got water everywhere when I turn the water supply back on and let everything dry and then I'm going to vacuum out all the metal shavings uh, and then hose out the dust, hose the whole thing out. I may or may not do the electrical before 
I do that or after. Depends on how motivated I am. But there's the uh, 110 supply that comes in. It's also, there's some switched. Let me think, is anything switched there? I don't think anything is switched there. It's just a supply line. Let me think, what did this do? This one, I actually don't remember. Oh, this one went over to the refrigerator. One of these went over to the grill. I'm sorry, to an outlet. One of these went to an outlet and one of these supplied the light, that light and the light all the way around the cage, the pool cage. So I don't need all of those uh, and I'm gonna redo them anyway with, uh, with all metal conduit, whatever you call it. Uh, but that'll be next. It's coming along. All right, if you're wondering what that droning sound was in the background, it's my neighbor's pool heater and it is awful. Uh, thing ran all day and uh, I hope that he either fixes it or replaces it. Um, he tried to encapsulate the thing in foam and to keep down on the noise, but it just, it's horrible. It, it just grinds through your brain all day. Uh, and actually, you can actually hear it in the house a little bit, which, um, you know, it's got to be close to breaking. Uh, anyway, I went ahead and finished up these top beams now that the plumbing was done and slid the uh, slid the, uh, the sink in and uh, needed to offset it in the front to allow room for the stone. Uh, and then I went ahead and put a two inch box beam back there and then realized I need more clearance for the faucet. So uh, I switched it out to a one inch beam and uh, I have plenty of room. I got a really cool faucet. It's a Delta stainless faucet, real chunky looking thing that is touch control. Uh, so I did that because uh, if the grill is hot, you know, it, it is going to be a reach to get back there. Everything is pretty tight. And this way uh, you can just touch the tip of the faucet. It'll come on and off and hopefully uh, that'll solve that problem of not having to reach back there to, to control it. Uh, here I am with the stone that we're using in the front there, getting the right distance off of that beam. And I haven't decided if I'm going to put concrete board on the front there or not. But if I do, it'll just bring it out further. So I have plenty of room either way. And I can always move that brace. It's not too difficult to do that. So once all of that was done, I decided to turn my attention to the electrical. And what I did was pre-wired everything. Uh, you may ask why uh, I used three wire on everything. You're going to see that in a minute. Uh, it's what I had. And also uh, in running switches, it's you know just easier to run the black up to the switch and then run the red back down to the uh, device that's going to be switched. Uh, and so that's why I just decided to use three wire anyway. So I ripped off the box that was on the house and put back a new box and then uh, decided to uh, run a jumper wire over to the distribution box that will be switched, that'll have a switched outlet in it for the disposal. And um, the, the way this will be wired, now I am going to have it professionally finished. I just pre-wired it, uh, but um, it'll be, everything will come out of the wall and into one single GFI, 20 amp GFI, which then will power the rest of the kitchen. Uh, so if anything shorts out, it'll pop that GFI and you'll just have to reset it by, you know, reaching under the sink there. And I figure that was the um, safest way to wire everything so that um, if there was a problem uh, it wasn't multiple GFIs it was just you know just one um, also I could not put the switches above the little chest of drawers like I planned to there wasn't enough room and that was I thought that was kind of disappointing at first but after thinking about it it's going to be much cleaner there'll be a um, switch on the right for the sink and that'll control the disposal and then there'll be a switch on the left of that little wing in exactly the same spots on either side so very symmetrical and that switch controls the lighting for the pool area uh, there's a I show it to you at the end but there's 
uh, Edison style lights that go all around the pool cage. And then there's a kind of a lantern style or street style light uh, that lights up the side yard there. And that'll be controlled right there, so you can e easily just switch it on. That's actually a smart switch also, but if you didn't have access to the, um, to the app, you could just tap it with your hand on your way to the screen door, and it would come on for you. Uh, so I really like this clean look. The problem is I have no external outlets around this area, so I'm going to put an outlet in there under the sink in case I want to plug something in that would charge or something that would plug in you know, underneath. Uh, I am going to pull up the pavers and run electricity over to this center aisle island, center island that I haven't built yet. You'll see that coming up in a minute. So here I am just kind of trying to get as much done as I can before pulling that fridge out because I cannot do it by myself. Uh, so I got my wife to come out and help. I actually had to run to Home Depot and buy another dolly and then mount boards on it to... Uh, kind of lean it up and get it in place so I could roll it around. The, the grill and the refrigerator are so ridiculously heavy that even two people, it's very awkward to pick up. Uh, here you can see how I brace the electrical outlet with one of the angle brackets. I think I'm going to go back and put a larger wall anchor bracket in place um, just to get it a little bit more stout. Uh, but once the uh, stone is in place in the front of it combined with a, a stainless steel face plate. It's going to be plenty tight uh, I think I just might go ahead and replace that um, Anyway So those are the face plates uh, that I'm using underneath uh, that one there will have the GFI in it uh, Which really nothing will be plugged into and then the other one will have the switched outlet for the disposal and I'm not going to bother switching the top one or the bottom one, I'm just going to make the whole thing switched because all I really need is the one. So here is this center island uh, that I'm trying to figure out the right shape, the right uh, width, the right distance away from the grill while still allowing enough distance to walk between the column that all that material is leaning up against and, um, and, the, uh, and the bar thing there. Because we walk through that area all the time. When we go outside, that's the area that we walk. So I, wanna, I wanted this thing to be large enough to be functional, but small enough so that it is not in the way at all. And then I also want to be able to save this view, this perspective, looking back into it. Because I want to see as much of the grill and everything as possible. So I want it to be uh, you know, just two simple columns. They'll be covered in, in that stone ledger. Uh, and then a slab of granite underneath where I can stick things, you know, a uh, plate or platter or spatula or whatever. And then a larger bar top, same, uh, same granite uh, for, for um, you know, a work surface. And my wife suggested, you know, bringing the stools out. Uh, and sure enough, they look and fit great. So in a minute here, I'm going to show you a video of that. All right, well, that's about it. I'm sitting on the uh, frame here. Got everything uh, taken out so that I could deal with the electrical and uh, I did build this little bar thing. So I'll flip the camera around. I'll show you how much I completed this week. Uh, this bar idea is kind of a work in progress. I'll show it to you, but um, everything is uh, pretty much going as planned. Still liking the design. Haven't had to rip anything else out. Uh, so this was a really productive uh, couple days here. I actually, once again, uh, did not have any time to work on it during the week. So I got all this done. Uh, worked on a little bit Friday night, but mostly just all day Saturday. And then today is Sunday. We went and bought the rest of the uh, tile or stone that's going to go everywhere. And um, I found concrete block finally. So I was able to put this little island thing together. Anyway, I'll show you and um, let me know what you think. All right, I have everything out. Um, just so you know, you cannot support this thing from the bottom without boards going all the way across. You will crush the little um, pan that collects uh, condensation and the compressor sits on a little platform. You'll crush that too. I almost found that out the hard way, but fortunately uh, I didn't mess anything up. So I just had to put these boards down. And then um, I think uh, I'll do during the week a video on the grill, finally, the um, griddle came in. So steer station, uh, grill area, that's where we'll do most of our cooking. 
And then the Sierra station I'll just leave in there all the time, I think. But um, I'm pretty excited that it finally came in. This is almost quarter inch thick stainless. It is uh, ridiculously thick. It should hold heat pretty well. Uh, but I think I'll do a complete video on this and post it as its own video. I haven't really seen one from a user's perspective. Barbecue Guys has one, but you know, it's not really from a user perspective. Anyway, this is, let me get it in wide mode for you. So the frame is completely done and uh, we put this little bar in place. You know, I've got this countertop problem. So um, we brought the little stools in from inside. Uh, I kept it pretty small. Uh, so once the barbecue grill is back in and the refrigerator's there and I see how much room I have right here in between the grill and the, um, and the little bar, I might move it around. I tried to keep it the same dimension as the opening for the grill. It's actually a little less, it's 48 inches across, but that's mainly because that's how big the board was. Um, but I think it looks neat because it, it fits right in this recessed area visually. And then the other thing I'm going for is when you're back here, I know this place is a disaster, but when you're back here sitting, I really wanted to be able to just look right through it and really appreciate the grill. And it will have to be centered in front of the grill. Uh, so placement, we'll see. Uh, also, it'll be almost two and a half inches taller because the granite is an inch and a quarter. And uh, this will be granite right here. And this will be granite right here. And then I'm going to run power to it. So that's gonna mean I'm gonna to have to rip up these pavers, run an underground wire and drill a hole back here somewhere. I'll show you the electrical work and the plumbing work in that in a minute. And then these columns and the little middle thing will be uh, covered with this stuff right here. And these columns, I, I showed that before, these columns and all the way around the perimeter of this area will be covered with that too, as well as right here. The front is going to be covered with this stuff. It looks the same. It's just a flatter tile and the whole front will be covered with this stuff right here. So I think it's gonna look really nice as far as uh, this framing, uh, I, ha I had finished this last video, this video I built, the uh, recess for the grill and the recess for the sink. I had to go with half inch or one inch here because I need enough room to get my faucet down in between my water supply and the brace. I finished the water supply and I uh, haven't done anything with the drain yet because I'm going to wait until everything's in place before I cut that drain so I get it at the right height. And you can see I have the electrical. So that yellow wire is the main coming in. And then I, um, I'm i gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna have an electrician come over and do this. I just pre-wired everything. Uh, it's all wired with three wire because that's what I had. And uh, that red wire will would only get used uh, here. This will be the switch for the um, disposal right here. I couldn't go with the switches here because they didn't fit. That was kind of a surprise, uh, but this is gonna work out great. The switch here for the disposal, um, and then the switch here for the uh, outside lighting, that light right there, as well as the perimeter lights all the way around the pool cage. That switch will be right there. And then this box here is where uh, those wires come together and go up the wall for the lights. And then this little box right here will be for the refrigerator and the side burner. And then I'm going to put one more outlet, I think, right here, just in case I needed something uh, that I wanted to charge in here, or I, I don't know, but this is a good spot for one more outlet that will be easily accessible uh, through this door. And then, like I mentioned, I am gonna put an outlet right here potentially power whatever is placed up here. Um, you know, like a crock pot or something. Anyway, uh, I think, oh, and I washed the whole thing out. So I got all the shavings out and all that. 
Uh, so it's coming along really nicely, quite a bit of progress. Um, once the electrical is completed, then I'll put everything back in, and then I can actually power stuff up. Uh, I can hook up the gas, which is right here, and I can um, hook up the electric t to the uh, refrigerator and everything, and then just wait and see how long it takes for granite to come. Um, not going to do any of the uh, tiling until the granite is in because I don't know how much of a gap I'll be dealing with here, and I'd rather just wait. It's not that much work. And uh, what I will do, though, is go ahead and put concrete board in here. I'm going to have to put it actually in here. I'll show you how I'm going to do that because I need to uh, glue the tiles right onto the aluminum because I just I ran out of room in this area. But uh, so I'll work on that a little bit and. Um, and next, this week, though, we, we have to pick out granite and get the uh, company to come out and do a template because that's going to start holding things up. While I'm waiting for granite, though, I can go ahead and do these columns. So that'll be in next week's video. And um, go ahead and run power over to this and start to figure this out. Anyway, a lot of progress. I'm really happy with the way it's coming out. Thanks, as always, for watching, and please subscribe. See ya.